Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding, here to discuss the topic of domestic tax amnesty. These days, offshore tax is all the rave, right? You've got, um, you've got the offshore disclosure programs, you've got streamlined, you've got delinquency, a reasonable cause for international penalties. Uh, there's still plenty of good people here in the U.S. who have their own domestic issues or reside overseas, um, but have unreported domestic-related income that they need to get into compliance. So while the IRS has both offshore and domestic related programs, today we're just gonna focus on some of the domestic related issues. Um, it's not limited to the Internal Revenue Service. Various uh, countries across the globe have their own domestic version of tax amnesty. Various states within the United States have their own uh, tax amnesty programs as well, designed for domestic related issues. So generally when it involves domestic tax amnesty, the key issue is going to be income. Uh, if it's an employee, let's say, he or she may not have properly reported income they received from their employer. Uh, likewise, if it's an employer, they may not be reporting their gross sales. They may not including, you know, cash income, uh, may not be included in their gross. They may overstate deductions that they don't have or expenses that don't exist. Um, one one common issue that we've been seeing a lot more lately from an individual perspective primarily is falsifying business and so the whole business uh, someone will come to me and, and this is what happened uh, they have a significant amount of income uh, let's say five six hundred thousand dollars they have no deductions change in the tax laws they can't deduct um, salt and so they go to a tax practitioner who says hey why don't we just pretend to create a business on paper it won't cost you anything and then we'll just uh, we'll amp up the deductions up front so that you could try to significantly reduce your income so maybe they pretend to buy a building take some significant depreciation or uh, they they create a consulting business that doesn't really do anything but you know they they lease their Porsche through their uh, uh, maybe a vacation home to take people out but really they're just taking their buddies out uh, that is probably going to cause a big problem with the IRS if busted. Um, generally, the IRS will see that as tax fraud, even if you're not under-reporting income, quote-unquote, by artificially increasing deductions, the result is the same, which is a decreased amount of net income, decreased amount of tax liability, which is artificial. So what kind of common industries uh, need domestic tax amnesty? Um, it's very common with construction businesses. Uh, a lot of times what will happen with those businesses is they start out small and then they get a few big projects, they hire some subs, uh, that it gets confusing with the numbers and it just kind of falls to the wayside in order to get the permits and get the, everything completed. Next thing you know, um, there's some underreporting of income or hiring of laborers who may not have papers and then that causes um, an employment tax withholding issue. In the medical field, with, with uh, physicians, we have found a, a common issue to be um, overstating expenses. So, um, you know, traveling for a seminar, okay. Uh, traveling with your significant other uh, across the country on a, on a three-week excursion uh, with no business reason other than, you know, possibly looking up other offices uh, may not fly. Entrepreneurs, uh, there's lots of issues with entrepreneurs and, you know, building your own business is tough, right? So with entrepreneurs, it's generally going to be things they can latch on to easily, such as um, mileage, car expenses, that's common, um, office expense, that's common, things like that. Um, entertainers, this is also very common, um, trying to break down what deductions you can take versus what you can't take if you're a foreign entertainer in the United States or a U.S. entertainer operating overseas there's very specific laws yeah the hotel room that you use uh, when you have a show is one thing uh, the hotel that you rent for another month after when you have no shows going on probably not so there are various different IRS amnesty programs the main one for domestic is the traditional voluntary disclosure program um, it's it's pretty complex and it, and it generally requires the use of an attorney there are the streamlined filing compliance procedures, but they require some form of offshore income as well. So if you also have some unreported offshore income and you're non-wolfful, you can use the streamlined program to uh, bring your domestic income into compliance as well, but it can't just be 
domestic because the the main purpose of that program is for the IRS to collect a Title 26 miscellaneous offshore penalty on the undisclosed offshore assets, accounts, and investments. There's always delinquency and FBAR depending on the type of domestic tax amnesty that you're seeking, what you're out of compliance for, things of that nature. My name is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding. We have lots of information on our main website, goldinglawyers.com. I hope this presentation was helpful. Enjoy the rest of your day.